Hello everybody, in this lecture we're going to learn about random number generation. Let's get started. So in C++, generating random numbers is essential to being able to test various results, alright? So how do we generate a random number? So there's one simple way we can do it. We can just you do C out rand and this will give us a random number, okay? We got 1804, okay? That's our random number. But what happens if we click run again? Well, it gives us the same exact number. So it's not very random because it's giving us the same number over and over again. Let's go ahead and click run again. Still, it's the same number. Can you believe it? So how can we make it uh, give us a different random number every time. So we're going to include a, another header file, okay? We include C standard library, okay? This gives us a lot of control over randomization, okay? So it's a library and we put it with all our other headers, okay? And we're going to put S rand. Okay, what does this do? So here, this is where it prints out the random number, but only with the help of this. Okay, so these are two different methods, as you can see. This is srand, and this is rand, okay? Now, in srand, let's put, for example, 40, okay? We're going to click Run. It gives us a different number this time, right? 1759, okay? But if we click it again, it still gives us 1759. But let's try changing it to 90, for example, right? What do we have? We have 1582. Okay, that's a different number. Let's try 32. We have 965. Okay, point is, every time, as you can see, every time we change the number here, it gives us a different random number. Interesting, okay? So this method prints out a random number, but only with the help of this. This code helps display this, okay? So this rand method is dependent on this. They almost work together, okay? So how can we change the number here in these between these two parentheses every time so that it gives us a random number every single time? How can we do that? Well, if we look at our clock, our clock changes all the time. Right now it's 1138, okay, and it's always a new number. So how can we implement our clock into here, our time, okay? So we're going to do that. We're going to include C time, okay, C time, okay? And within our srand method, we're going to type time. It's another function, so it's a function within a function, which is perfectly possible, okay? We're inputting an integer, and this time zero is an integer as well, okay? So it's very confusing, but that's C++ for you, you know? It's pretty cool. We're not going to go in depth on why this works and how it even works, but all you need to know is that this is dependent on this srand function, so rand Keep in mind, rand depends on s rand, okay? And so time, since the time is always changing, right now it's 11.39, always changing, right? Because the number is always changing, this will always give us a different result. Kind of interesting, all right? Let me show you. So if you click run, it gives us 2140, okay? We're only going to pay attention to the first couple digits because it's a big number, okay? 2140, let's click run again. 1784, okay. 1119. Point is, you understand. It's giving us a random number every single time now, which is good. But what if we only, for example, let's say we only want a number between 1 and 6. Numbers between 1 and 6, okay. How can we do that? Well, we can use that, do it with the help of modulo. Okay, something we learned early on, module this, technically it's a percent symbol, let's do 6, and let's wrap it around uh, 
no parentheses, okay? So rand modulo 6, okay? I'm pretty sure if you sit here and you blah blah blah, you'll figure out how this works, okay? We're gonna click run, and it gives us 3, okay? That's a number between 1 and 6, okay? 2, that's also a number between 1 and 6. 2, okay? 0. Now, here we got 0, but 0 is not a number between 1 and 6. So what do we need to do to turn that 0 into a 1? Well, we need to add 1. It's really that simple. So we're just going to plus 1. Okay, make sure you have your parentheses. And you want to add this entire thing, plus 1, okay? That's how it works. So let's go ahead and use a for loop, okay? Okay, and we're going to do int i equals 0, i is less than 10, i plus plus, okay? Let's go ahead and try it out. So we're going to use, uh, let's do a slash t, a tab. Let's take a look. So we got 2, 3, 1, 5, 3, 4, 6, 6, 6, 2. 6, 6, 6, very funny, okay? So let's count 1, we got 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6, okay? Which is amazing, right? So this gives us control over generating random numbers, and I just showed you how to do it. Okay, so this is useful in so many scenarios, especially video games, when you want something random to happen at a random time, at a random place. Okay, and this is how you would do it in C++, it's pretty difficult. It's very complicated, right? So many steps, but in other programming languages, it's a little easier. But I hope you guys learned something new today. Um, and I want to thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video.